we previously discussed confidence intervals for a mean when we know the standard deviation or the variance, but this is not usually the case that we would know the variance but not know the mean. So a more realistic thing to assume is we don't know the variance just as we don't know the mean. Okay, so we're trying to get a, co get a confidence interval for mu when sigma squared is unknown. That's essentially our goal. All right, so what's our setup? We have a random sample of size n from a normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma squared. So we have these xi's, they're iid from a normal distribution, mean mu variance sigma squared, and mu is unknown. That's why we're trying to get a confidence interval, interval for it. All right, so way back before when we were talking about confidence intervals for mu when sigma squared was known, then we knew that x bar minus mu divided by sigma over root n had a standard normal distribution. But we do not know sigma usually. So what do we do if we can't plug in sigma here? What are we supposed to do instead? An intuitive thing to do would be swap out this population standard deviation for the sample standard deviation. If we do that, we get x bar minus mu over s divided by root n. And this is no longer going to follow a standard normal distribution because we've swapped out sigma for s. So instead, it's going to follow what we call a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if you want the proof of this, you can look in the book. Um, it's theorem 553. All right, so we have the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. A little bit of intuition on what the t distribution looks like by comparing it to our standard normal distribution. All right, so here's 0. Here's our standard normal distribution. And then if we look at a t distribution with maybe 20 degrees of freedom, it's still going to be centered at 0, but it's going to have heavier tails. It's going to have more in the tails and less in the center. So here's our standard normal. Here's our t with maybe 20 degrees of freedom. As we increase the degrees of freedom, in other words, as we increase our sample size, then the tails of the t distribution are going to slowly drop until they get closer and closer to the tail of the standard normal distribution. And similarly, the t distribution center is going to go up towards the center for the um, standard normal distribution as our sample size increases. So what this is saying that is that as our sample size gets larger and larger, then we're going to be getting like a better idea of what our sample standard deviation is. So this quantity is going to get closer and closer to a standard normal distribution. And when you get to a super humongous sample size, then the differences between a t distribution with a super humongous number of degrees of freedom and a standard normal distribution will be almost imperceptible. All right, so this is the distribution that we're going to use when we talk about confidence intervals. So our theorem, if we want to use this to construct a confidence interval, uh, 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for mu when sigma squared is unknown is going to be our sample mean plus or minus a quantile from our t distribution so that we have alpha over 2 in the tail and we're using n minus 1 degrees of freedom times s over root n. So quick little second about what this is. Here's our t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And since we're looking for a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval, we put 1 minus alpha in the middle, alpha over 2 in this tail, alpha over 2 in this tail. And so then we could call this quantile here t alpha over 2 comma n minus 1, and actually negative there, and then the same thing but positive here. So because it's symmetric, then the quantile it here is negative t alpha over 2, and this quantile is positive t alpha over 2. All right, and in the next video, we'll see 
a little proof slash derivation to see how we ended up with this confidence interval there.